Hello everyone, it is Lucy and today we're going to talk all about how to level up your skincare routine. This is actually the third and final part of a little skincare for beginners, introduction to skincare explainer sort of series I've been doing, which has basically just been about breaking down skincare and making it not so spooky for beginners. So if you haven't seen either of those first two videos, then make sure to go and check them out. So in the first one, we just kind of run through the basics of skincare and like a no frills routine. And then the second video was kind of more of that next step up, looking at things like serums and actives and how to address your personal goals. And then this third level of skincare, which is this video here, is where we're just kind of talking about all those extra little fun things, those extra steps that you can add in to really get enjoyment out of your routine. Or if you're just kind of interested in the new product developments or tech that is available in the skincare industry. Things like essences, lotions and toners, eye creams, different kinds of masks as well, all of that. So if you are keen to hear about those and get those kind of broken down, then stay tuned. Also, I do actually have a very exciting announcement which I am going to kind of spoil and talk about here because I really don't think I can wait to just like include it at the end of the video. I have actually had the incredible opportunity to partner up with Wish Trend to put together a little collaboration box, a little bundle of some of my favorite Korean beauty products. So with this video, this little end to the series finally going live, I am very pleased to announce that Lucy's Munch Crunch Skincare Bunch is live on Wish Trend. Absolutely delighted that I got to <laughs> pick that name. So this box will be available for a limited time and it includes four full-size Korean beauty products as well as a little free skincare gift. I have been sitting on this little skincare secret for a while now. I'm so excited to share it with you. All of the products in the box are actually products from my favorites tab on my skincare spreadsheet. For those of you who don't know, Wish Trend are a K beauty retailer. They have a variety of different brands available on their website. So many brands that I use and really enjoy. So I wish I could say it was like really difficult for me to decide on some products to include in this box, but it wasn't because I already had favorites. But we got there and we were able to put together a value bundle that retails for 112 US dollars, but it is 45% off this bundle. So all four of the products plus the free gift are available for 61.60. So in the bundle, you'll have the BioWish Trend Green Tea and Enzyme Powder Wash, the Claire's Supple Preparation Unscented Toner, the delicious I'm from honey mask and the completely underrated I'm from vitamin tree water gel and as a little skincare munch crunch treat we have three of the Claire's rich moist soothing tensile sheet masks that are complimentary little gift obviously I have picked every product in this box and I felt really strongly about it being a mix of practical everyday items that you could work into your routine as well as a couple more products that were a little bit more kind of treat yourself sort of vibes or something that you might not already have in your routine anyway I will run down each of the products in a little bit more detail towards the end of the video, but let's have our little skincare lesson first. Quick reminder that I am not a derm or an esthetician. I am just a skincare enthusiast who has some specialized retail experience and a weird freakish spreadsheet that she likes to update. I also believe that there is no right or wrong when it comes to skincare. Whatever works for you and your skin is the right skincare routine for you. And I don't think skincare should just be this big intimidating spooky dooky thing. So I made this stunning graph. <laughs> Essentially, we have made it to tier three skincare, which is kind of your most experienced extensive extra type of skincare routine slash products that you could think of. I definitely use a solid amount of products from the tier three category, but I wouldn't say my everyday skincare routine is necessarily like a tier three routine, if that makes sense. So let me give you an example of a tier three skincare routine if you were to do one in its entirety. So in the AM, it would be second cleanser, essence toner, lotion, device, serum, eye cream, moisturizer, sunscreen. And in the PM, it would be first cleanser, second cleanser, mask, essence slash toner, eye cream, serum, moisturizer, face oil. So in this video, we're gonna be going through a bunch of different product categories slash types. So if you are looking for any recommendations or just generally reviews on different products, if you wanna know if I've used one or if I recommend one, then I highly recommend you to check out my skincare spreadsheet, which I will link below. But if you haven't seen it, you can sort it by product type, brand, product name. And I tend to write like little mini reviews of everything. But also if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below or DM me on Instagram and I will do my best to help. If you're ever wondering if I have an opinion on a brand or a particular product, it's probably on there. So first up, we're talking about the watery liquidy deliciousness that we typically put in our skin first thing after cleansing. Now I've bunched essences, toners, and lotions kind of together because honestly, I think these days the difference between those different product types is basically just semantics. 
Like historically, toners tended to be this really astringent type of product, but now I wouldn't really say that's necessarily the case. So any of the products named these things, essences, toners, lotions, tend to just kind of fall under the watery-ish product that isn't really thick enough to be a serum kind of thing. And so the reason why you might like to include these products into your routine is that they will help prep your skin for the rest of your routine. And guess what? I've got a fun little analogy for you. It wouldn't be one of these videos if I didn't do like a fun little analogy. But basically think of your skin like a kitchen sponge. Now, if you have a spill on a bench top and you take a dry sponge, you'll put the dry sponge down in it and it will kind of like suck a bit up, but it will sort of take a little bit to suck the rest up because like the top is still hard. Whereas if you took a dry sponge and you put it under water and you've rinsed it out and it was like nice and damp, it would probably be able to clean up that same spill without you having to like flip it over or anything. It would just absorb it up really easily. Your skin is like that. If you put something onto dry skin, it may not absorb as well as if your skin is already damp and it's already a little bit more of a similar kind of texture, a similar level of hydration as to the thing you kind of putting on top. It's kind of like a little stepping stone, if you will, like having your skin be a little bit damper just is more similar to and is going to make it easier for any type of serum-y, viscous -y products to sink in, as opposed to them trying to sink in as well on like completely dry skin. So with essences or toners or lotions, you can either use a cotton pad or you can use your hands, whatever method you prefer. I personally really like doing multiple layers because my skin is just like permanently dehydrated. That's just my skin type. So I personally like doing quite a few different different layers of my toner or essence or lotion. This step isn't necessary for everyone, but I do feel like most people would at least see some benefit from it. Again, for me personally, I feel like it does make a really big difference in my skin, but I also think it's a really good way to get a little bit of extra dose of goodness into your skincare routine. Even if you just do like one thin layer, whether it's like fermented ingredients or hydrating ingredients, a lot of modern toner, essence, lotion formulas will have some type of little goodies packed into them. So yeah, regardless of your skin type, I think most people would be able to find a couple of different products within this category that they would enjoy. Next up, eye creams. I am not going to go too in depth with this category because being completely honest, I don't really use them. It's not for me. Uh, no, but I, I'm in my 20s, so it's not really a product category that I have felt the need to really use a lot of and that I have a lot of experience with. There was a period of time where I thought I had like really severe seasonal allergies, but I found that I was just allergic to something. Um, and I did use eye cream a lot during that period. But since remedying my own self-afflicted allergies, uh, not, not a product that I really use a lot. I, I, look, I've tried a couple and I find them pleasant enough to use, but I don't really feel like, and this is a perfect example of why everyone's different because some people like eye cream necessity. And who knows, maybe down the track that'll be me and eye cream is a necessity. But at this current point in time, I don't really feel the need to. It's not something I particularly go out of my way to enjoy. And that is why everyone is different. In terms of breaking down eye creams as a product category and what makes them different, with eye creams, in my opinion, they are usually a variation on another product, whether it's like a face serum or a face cream, something about it is going to make it slightly more tailored to the eye area, whether it is the texture or potentially the ingredients that will maybe target a goal that you have for under your eye area. Or maybe they have something like a really nice little, you know, cooling applicator tip. That's another example. I have used a couple, which you can check out on my skincare spreadsheet, but to be completely honest, I, at this current point in time, am totally happy just using my face products and just taking them up to my eyes. Obviously, again, everyone is different, especially when it comes to things like sensitivity and irritations and even things like milia around the eyes. But yeah, I'm just being honest with you. I personally just use my existing face products and I just kind of test them out near my eye. And if we're good, then I continue. But as always, be very careful with testing things, test them out before you kind of commit to them and give particular care and attention to any strong or active ingredients that might be in them. But yeah, that's my little eye cream section. I have been waiting to talk about masks, but I knew that they fit into the kind of third tier because they're not really something you need to use like every day. They're not really a necessity, but I personally really like masks as a category. I included two different kinds of masks in my skincare box, so that probably tells you something. Masks are like status potions in an RPG game in that their individual power and effects can really vary depending on the individual situation. And their effects can also vary depending on your player character's kind of needs and strengths and traits. I feel like you could also just summarise masks as, oh, oh my god. god. 
time and place. So you have three main varietals of mask. You have wash off masks, overnight masks, and sheet masks. So wash off masks are typically used after cleansing. They're usually in a tube or a pot and you can spread them using your fingers or a spatula. Most of the time when you're thinking of the wash off mask category, I feel like a traditional mud mask will come to mind. But over the last few years, wash off masks with more hydrating or kind of gentle exfoliating properties have become a lot more popular as well. Mud masks are amazing for exfoliating and decongesting the skin, but otherwise there are also wash off masks with a lot more kind of gentle, hydrating, moisturizing properties. But these ones you can often leave on quite a bit longer than the mud masks as well. Like me personally, I love a good mud mask, but the amount of times that I've like forgotten that I'm wearing it and not taken them off when I'm meant to take them off and then like accidentally dried out my skin, it's been, it's been more than a handful of times that I've done this. So a more hydrating or moisturizing mask can basically just sit on your face for as long as you want, in my opinion. So then you have overnight masks and these are often applied in a very similar way to a wash off mask, except they are meant to be left on and for it to absorb into your skin completely. Or if not completely, it's just meant to stay on and kind of like coat your skin in like a little layer. And this category is interesting because it's basically kind of like a moisturizer, but tends to have a little bit of a variation in the formula to make it a bit more occlusive. So they're typically designed to kind of keep all the moisture locked in and for you to wake up looking really plump and juicy. And these formulas can be either kind of like a cream type or more of like a jelly type. They're very similar to moisturizers, but I just, there's something, that little extra something, something. Maybe they're a little bit thicker, maybe they're a little bit stickier, but the trade-off comes with like those extra benefits. Again, like all kind of different masks, I find these are great if you need a little bit of extra skin TLC. And last, but certainly not least, we have sheet masks. I feel like most of you will have seen these around and me explaining them is kind of like redundant. But typically these sheets are more commonly made of cotton, but you can also get them made of silk or even biocellulose or like jelly types. There's lots of different kinds now, but they usually come in like a single serve sachet or even sometimes a multi-pack and they are just drenched in essence. But they are designed to be placed on your face, usually at the same step where you would have a serum step for like 15 to 20 minutes. I feel like sheet masks are divisive because some people do not actually enjoy the process of a sheet mask, which I understand. I personally am delighted by it and love it. As a chronically dehydrated girly when it comes to skin, I do drink lots of water, but it's my skin, it just doesn't, she's dry. I also just feel like the cooling element is really nice. You can put them in the fridge if you want them to be like really cool. I don't know, this is one of those things in the tier three category that I realize is a little bit extra, but I feel like I really enjoy it and adding it to my routine does make a difference and it, I, I enjoy it. I already said that, but I really do. <laughs> and now we're briefly gonna chat about face oil, which is exactly what it sounds like. It is an oil for your face. <laughs> like we talked about in an earlier video, even if you have an oily skin type, that doesn't mean you should be afraid of oil. But generally a face oil is a product that you would put on before, after, or in place of your moisturizer. There are varieties that are more like a single type of oil, like a marula oil or a tamanu oil. And there are some that are more of a mix and have a little bit more of a complicated formulation. I personally feel like face oils are really great for winter or drier climates. I'm just like coating my face in it so I look like a little, I don't know, like a premium quality hot dog or a little donut. But I also love facial oils in particular as a delivery method for retinols, which are an active we talked about in the last video. My skin just seems to really like and get along with that kind of retinol formula. So because they are an active, I tend to do those types of oils before my moisturizer. But yeah, depending on the purpose of the face oil can kind of change its whereabouts in your routine of where you might want to put it on. Kind of compared to a moisturizer, maybe putting it on before would work if it's like a thinner consistency and if your moisturizer is really thick and oil heavy as well. It totally depends. I see a lot of debate about it, but I honestly do think it comes down to a little bit of personal preference. Again, with a lot of products in this video, it's a little bit more of a broader category and there's a lot of variance within it. But the main thing that face oils have in common is that they are oily. I didn't really have a place for this because similar to face oils, this category can really depend on like what the formula is. And the mist factor is more of the fact that it is delivered via a spray. But if I were to generalize, most of the time a face mist would be kind of in the place of a essency toner type of product, like something watery and hydrating that you can sandwich between layers of your skincare or use to prep your skin. Occasionally and more recently, you may have seen some formulas that have a little bit more of a moisturizing or even like an oily kind of component to them. And that kind of puts them more into like 
the moisturizer sort of category because those ones are usually designed to be sprayed on top or sprayed throughout the day to add additional moisturizer and also keep the moisture that you have like locked into your skin. You know, they might be kind of nice almost as like a makeup setting mist to give your skin a little bit of extra glow. Again, depending on the weather conditions and the climate or the situation, like maybe you're on a flight, you might want to spritz with one to kind of refresh the skin and give it a little bit of extra hydration and moisture. But again, like oils, they're kind of a nebulous category and that it really depends on the juice inside the spritzer as to what kind of product it is. But it typically tends to fall within those sort of two major categories, either like a toner kind of category or like an oil topper upper. I'm very smart. <laughs> so the last category I wanted to chat about was devices, which is a category that I feel like has to be included in the tier three of skincare, because I feel like once you get really into skincare, you then sort of start seeing the kind of more experimental like tech kind of stuff. And the way they came from like clinic or like kind of cosmetic surgery kind of applications to being like at home for consumer users. So these are things like the LED light tools, like the masks. You have at home microneedling and microdermabrasion. You've got cleansing tools and you also have microcurrent tools. All of these different tools are designed to do different things. So I feel like this is definitely more of a pathway that you will kind of naturally go down once you sort of get to a certain interest level in skincare. But if you get to a point where you have like a skincare goal in particular, and you find that even with experimenting and trying different types of actives and like different combinations of products and all of that, that you're still like not quite getting there, then that's, I think, when devices can come into play. But again, like I said, I've really only had experience with one particular type of device, like in any extensive type of way, and that is microcurrent. In a nutshell, microcurrent devices usually emit a really small, low level amount of electricity that stimulates the muscles under your skin and essentially gives your skin a workout. Or well, that's at least how a lot of these devices try and explain it to you because like it is a lot more sciencey than that. But basically the result of giving your skin a little bit of stimulation from one of these devices will kind of have instant sort of lifting effects because you're basically stimulating your facial muscles so then your facial muscles become more toned. I got it because I have jaw tension. <laughs> She's a stressed little girl, Goss. But yeah, I'm gonna keep it brief and we can maybe talk about it later at a different time, but I didn't want to leap into any kind of minimally invasive cosmetic procedures. Like I was sort of at the point where I was looking into it and considering it because it was starting to really affect my day-to-day -day life. But I felt like I hadn't also really explored a lot of options. And like, obviously number one option is like try and reduce stress, but like, <laughs> No, I don't know. Like I just seen a lot of stuff about microcurrent devices recently and they were talking about how they stimulate the muscle. And so then I was kind of like, I wonder if they're using microcurrent devices in like surgical or medical contexts to help with like muscles and rehabilitation in that context. You know, I used to wonder how I got pegged in school for being like a woman in STEM, but like I do hear myself say things and I'm like, well, <laughs> but yeah, I found some studies that suggested that microcurrent helped with like relieving muscle tension and pain. And I was like, well, it's my jaw muscle and it's a microcurrent. So let's try that because it's a lot cheaper to try this device than to actually go and get like jaw Botox. Um, and it worked, surprisingly. Um, obviously you need to be consistent, which I'm not amazing at. It just kind of helps to sort of like relax the muscle because it's basically giving it like a little, you know, under the skin massage. So I don't know if this is like a well-known hack because I feel like when I initially looked it up, not a lot of people seemed to talk about it and maybe it's just me. It could potentially be placebo, but like, I will say when it comes to the rest of my face and just using it kind of as it is marketed, I do find that it gives kind of like a really nice, like subtle kind of like snatching effect. So even if, you know, um, the jaw thing kind of goes haywire, at least it still does the yassification of my cheekbones. So yeah, the one I use is the Freo Bear for anyone interested, but I know there are other ones out there as well, but um, yeah. And with that, I believe we have covered everything under tier three. We have gone over now basically almost every type or variety of skincare product that you might come across in a routine. Let me know if there's anything I missed because there is so much variety in skincare now. Like it's bananas. So much to talk about. Um, but luckily for you, I, I'm pretty, I, I can, I can talk so we can just, we can just keep doing this. So now that we've covered off all of that, we've kind of gone through the 
Lucy Living Skincare text volumes one, two, and three. I'm just gonna quickly chat through the products that are included in my box. So first up, we have the Wish Trend Green Tea and Enzyme Powder Wash. When I first tried this and started incorporating it into my routine, I was taken aback. I, had, I just wasn't sure how I hadn't tried it before because like, let me be real. Um, it takes quite a bit for me to kind of get excited and jazzed about a cleanser. So first of all, this smells like matcha or like green tea. It's like a soft, like powdery, delicious scent. And if you know me, you know that I'm green tea girly. So I just think this is incredible. And the experience of using this is delightful. But this is basically an enzyme powder wash, which I don't think we specifically covered off powder cleansers, but essentially they are a powder and you sprinkle a little bit into your hand and then put a couple drops of water in and use it to make a lather. And then you just apply it to your face as you would a normal cleanser. Before I tried this, I was quite skeptical because I find that sometimes these powder cleansers can be very harsh and stripping and intense, but that is not the case here. It is so gentle. I am very sensitive to that kind of squeaky clean, like tight feeling. And I avoid those types of cleansers like the plague. And this is not one of them. My skin just is left feeling super soft and like gently cleansed and refreshed. So good. Also, I have been using this daily for months as a second cleanser and I'm like still not through one bottle yet. I don't know if it's just me because I feel like you only need like a really small amount to get like a really nice lather, but the value on this bad boy is simply bonkers. Then we have the I'm from Honey Mask. I feel like if you have tried this, then you will know why this is here. This is truly one of the most delicious, gentle, nourishing masks I have ever had the pleasure of using. And it is just, it's a delight. It's a delight. And it really does smell like honey and not just like, you know, kind of like grocery store squeezy honey. It smells like that premium, like, you know, like in a little jar with like a ribbon on it from like a cottage and it's like creamy and got like a really nice dark color to it. I'm really into honey in case you couldn't tell. Green tea and honey, both are present in this box. And I wouldn't include them in the box if they weren't like a good representation of those delicious things. Like the smell of this mask is simply beyond. Even just from like an aromatherapy standpoint for me personally, it's like so calming and relaxing and just, it's so edible and tasty looking. It is truly like top five forbidden snacks for me. Please don't eat it, but know I am with you in solidarity that I would like to, but don't. I feel like I like legally should say don't, don't, don't. I don't, I won't. Applying it is easy. It is not like applying honey. It's a lot less sticky of a process. It is more like kind of icing a beautiful cake if your face was the beautiful cake, which it is. Your face is a beautiful cake. I find because it's really just hydrating and nourishing, you can really leave it on for like a good chunk of time for just like full plumping deliciousness. And I also just want to say that removing this mask is really easily. Um, one of my pet peeves about wash off masks is that even if they have really good effects, they're kind of like annoying to remove. You know what I mean? Like they just, you know, they just don't come off easily and you have to kind of like scrub at them and it gets like stuck and it's like a whole thing. No, not with this one. This one just rinses off really easily, making it an obvious inclusion for this box. Then we have the Claire's Supple Preparation Unscented Toner. I'm quite confident I have sung the praises for this toner before, but I, I'm, I'll sing them again. This is the product that made me fall in love with Claire's as a brand. It's just like a multi-purpose legend. You can do one layer, you can do two. You can do 10. You can do a DIY sheet mask. You could really slot it into any combination of skincare products. And I feel like it would be at home and do well. Like, let me count the ways. I love thee. Like you look at it and it seems like really unassuming, but inside it has ingredients to hydrate, soothe and brighten your skin. It's just like a little skincare multivitamin. It applies like a dream. And it just sinks into your skin without making it sticky or tacky or anything. I truly feel like all skin types would be able to get down with this. Give it a little extra, you know, Yum yum. Munch crunch skincare bunch. <laughs> and then we have another product from I'm From, which is the Vitamin Tree Water Gel. So again, with the box, I wanted to include a mix of products that people might not have tried or don't have in their routine already. It would be fun for them to like test out. But I also wanted to include something that could become a really handy staple that you could use every day. And when I was thinking about a product like that, this one immediately came to mind. This is one of my favorite gel moisturizers. It's got a lovely lightweight jelly type texture that just sinks into your skin and you get this immediate like plumping, gorgeous, like hydrated dewy effect. And a little goes a long way. I just don't feel like there's really enough hype for this product. If you have dry or dehydrated skin and you're thinking like that's a gel moisturizer, this sandwiches so well with other products to kind of get you to the hydration level you need. 
But if you're on the oilier side, this could very well be like a one and done for you. For me in the warmer months, I just do something like a light layer of the Claire's toner and then pop this on top and I am sorted. And I can confirm I've tested it with various configurations of sunscreen and makeup and it is, it's a team player. And last but certainly not least, we have the free gift, which is three of the Claire's Rich Moist Soothing Tensil Sheet Masks. And this variety of sheet mask actually come as a top section and a bottom section, which means you can better get it to fit and sit comfortably on your face. And honestly, I just really like how soft the like tensile gauze material is. It's unscented, it's chill, it does the job. Anyway, I apologize because I'm obviously very excited about this. This is such a fun little project that I've been working on. And I'm really excited that I finally get to talk to you about it and share it with you because like I've been marinating on this for like quite a while. Like the plans have been in motion for a hot saccharoni since like long Last year. And it's just been a really fun process and the Wish Trend team have just been like an absolute pleasure and delight to work with. But also I want to give you a big shout out for watching and or listening. <laughs> and thank you for all the comments and messages and support as my channel has been growing. Ugh, it's sincerity, Lucy, here we go. Um, <laughs> but your encouragement really um, means a lot to me. And even if you are like a silent watcher and you have never commented or messaged or anything like that, um, I know you're out there and I want to say a big thank you to you as well. But yeah, anytime I get, you know, an exciting opportunity like this, I'm keenly aware that I wouldn't be able to do any of these things without you. So, thanks. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you like the box. I like was really trying to big brain like the combination of products. And again, I just wanted to be that combination of like practical everyday stuff that I know you'd be able to reach for, as well as some kind of treats that you might not already have. The Munch Crunch Skincare Bunch will be available for a limited time. So I will put the link and the information in the description box below. So if it's something that takes your fancy that rustles your jimmies then you can go ahead and check that out of course if you have any questions about the bundle and the products in it or just generally like any part of this video feel free to leave a comment down below or you can message me on ig and i will do my very best to answer with the two brain cells i have left in operation as always thank you so so much for watching and i will see you in the next one bye